Sheet. How are we all doing? I hope you're all well. Um, in today's video, um, we've got a job that's it's a little bit of a problem job. Um, so I'll show you what it is. Uh, this is a spoiler off a Porsche GT3 RS. Um, fairly newish car. Um, these spoilers are apparently they're about £10,000. So, yeah, can't see how that's £10,000, but apparently that's what they are to buy. Um, so, yeah, the issue with this spoiler, and it, it's, apparently it's, it's quite a well known issue with these, and Porsche will, will not warrant these spoilers, probably because it's such a common issue with them. Um, so, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a bit of background of. Uh, what we've done to this. Um, so the guy bought bought this spoiler to us. It was a, probably about 18 months ago um, and, and it, he had the whole car was PPF'd including the spoiler um, and what happened well, just on the spoiler only he had loads of micro blistering appear in the clear coat and it caused all the PPF to lift. Um, so we took all the PPF off it and there was blistering tiny little micro bubbles across the whole surface, top and the bottom of it. Um, so we repainted it for him. What we done is we, we buzzed off all the base coat and the clear coat down to pretty much the factory primer that was on there. Um, and we couldn't see any blistering or, or anything in the factory primer. So we reprimed it and base coat and lacquered it again. And then he left it for a four to eight weeks or whatever, I can't remember now. Um, and had it re-PPF'd again. So then about, yeah, probably 12 months later or so, these little blisters started appearing again. So he's brought it back to us again. Um, we did, we wouldn't give him any guarantees with it, which he was fine with that. Um, but it, it's happened again. So now what we've done this time is we've took everything off of it. There's a lot of layers to take off in the end, obviously, where we primed it and base coat and lacquered it. So we've took everything off of this now to bare plastic, or I'm not even sure, it is some type of fiber plastic. I don't know what the material is, to be honest with you. Um, so we've took it all off bare, back to, back to, the, to the bare material. Um, and now um, it's been like that for a few days now. And what I've been doing is uh, every time I've been baking a job, I've been put, sticking it in the boob and baking it with it bare. It's just, if there's like release agents or anything like that that need to escape, um, that's what I've been trying to do, to try to get everything out of it if I can. They are hollow through there. So it is some sort of, it's either some sort of release agent or it's some sort of air that's trapped in the material. Um, but I did notice, we, me and Reese noticed it uh, yesterday, um, the, there was like tiny little dark spots everywhere on the bare plastic, where the bare plastic looks grey and dry, there was all, almost like moisture spots here, there and everywhere. And I did say to Reese, uh, it's like, if you like splashed maybe some compound over it or something from polishing another job where it's been sat on a trestle, and he said no, so we don't know if something may be coming out of it, but anyway, <coughs> We're not sure what's causing it. We're just trying to find a way to, to stop it from happening. So what, what I'm gonna do with this now, this, this is all I can think of doing, is it needs priming now, because this is finished off in 240, so it's, it's a little bit rough for plastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, it's all been degreased a few times, I've baked it again before I do this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a coat of adhesion promoter. So what I use is Meeper, so it'd be Meeper Haft promoter. I'm going to give it a, a coat of that, let that dry off, give that a good 10-15 minutes to dry off. And then I'm going to smear, because we did think about filling this, but it, it could end up a right mess putting filler all over it. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to smear this over it, so it's Meeper it's, it's a pore filler, so a liquid pore filler that you put over over plastics and and filler work to fill in micro pinholes. So that's what it is, is a micro pinhole filler. So once I have, have to promote has gone off, the adhesion promoter, 
I'm going to smear this all over it. You just wipe it on, just wipe it on and wipe it in until it disappears. And then I'm going to give it three coats of high build primer and um, see where we're at with it then. That's, that's all I can think to do with this. So that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, so I'm going to get this in primer now. Um, so this video is going to be me priming, prepping and painting. We didn't, we didn't do any footage of taking all that old paint off. I thought that's probably a bit boring, to be honest with you. Um, it took about four, four or five hours to get all that paint off. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to prime this and as well in this video, um, it's going to be, I'm going to be using a new clear coat that I've got. So it's Meeper. Um, this, this clear coat has not been out long. It's called Meep, it's CX2, it's called so Meeper CX2. And it's sort of a little bit cheaper than the Meeper CX4, which this is their fast cure technology range. That's what they call it. So it's going to be first job I'm going to do with that Meeper CX2. And um, yeah, I'm going to give them a mention because I haven't mentioned them yet. My paint supplier, which is, uh, they're based in Sirencester and they're called paint services. And um, that's who I use for all my paints and all, all, all the products I use. So Market Paint Services has supplied this for me. And I said I'd give him a mention. Um, they're a brilliant company. I've, ever since I started doing this uh, about 17 years ago, they, they helped me to set up, they supplied materials for me. And I, I was a brand new startup and they knew, they knew me, but I, I was a brand new company and they, and they set me up with a load of materials to start my business off. So they've been with me from day one and they've been fantastic. They're an absolute brilliant company. And Mark, who I deal with at Paint Services, um, that he's great. He, he bends over backwards for me. Um, every time I ring them up, they've never got anything that I want. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. They are, they are great. They are, they are great. I've got a good relationship with them. Um, but the service is terrible. <laughs> no, it's not really. I thought I'd stick that in there for Mark to, to amuse him. But no, honestly, they are great. And they, they've got uh, branches elsewhere, not just in Sirencester. So Oxford, uh, Cheltenham, Reading. I think they might have a branch somewhere else as well. So they're, they're sort of in the southwest down this way. Um, but they are an absolute brilliant company. Um, so if you ever need any paint supplies or anything like that, or if you're in the trade and, and, the, and they deliver to your area, it's well worth using. They're well worth using. They're, they're a fantastic company. So that's Market Paint Services in Sirencester. That's a, sh a shout out to him on this job. So yeah, so it'd be new clear coat going on on this and then um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. So it's all ready to go now. So I'm going to put the half promoter on there, the pore filler, let that dry. That's about 10, 15 minutes. And then um, it'd be left for a couple of days then. And then um, the next bit of footage would be me painting it. So that being said, I'm going to crack on with it.
worried on YouTube's the Porsche GT3 RS spoilers ready so I'll give you a quick look and um hopefully we've got it I haven't got any footage of the prep in so I primed it so I adhesion promoted it uh smeared it with pore filler let that dry right out and give it a little bake and then you know, it's three coats of primer MEPA 4 plus 1 and um it was really gritty the primer where the plastic was sort of static and and um so there was a lot of sort of debris in the primer but we can't see any micro pinholes so hopefully it'll be okay but i'll see on the first coat of base coat whether it's um well to be fair i'm going to give it a coat of uh wet and wet anyway so i've got this to paint so this is ultraviolet this color's called it's purple um i also got a wing to do for a suzuki a new wing so i'm going to do these two together so i'll be wet and wet in that this is a metallic blue so wet and wet these two these two panels and then um yeah and then base coat them both and clear coat them both and um yeah i'll be doing these with uh meeple water base base coat so first the wet the wet and wet will be um meeple f37 so a coat of that on the wing and on the spoiler and then uh then the base coat, Meeple, Meeple water base base coat, and then I'm going to be using new clear coat that um, that I mentioned <coughs> at the beginning of the video. Um, so uh, Meeple CX2. And, um, I've done a couple of jobs with it now, and um, yeah, I'm really liking it. It's, it's it's really good, really good clear coat. So it's a fast dry technology clear coat. Um, so yeah, it'd be two coats of that as well. Um, so yeah, that being said, I'll get all the uh, get all the paints mixed up and we'll we'll get the paint on it.
வந்து
that didn't really go to plan. I um I forgot to pop the top on the wet on wet, so the 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 first coat of wet and wet on top of the spoiler went on a bit dry because I didn't pop the top on the starter cup which I do quite often so that didn't lay down very nice and second mistake I didn't put a, put a filter into the starter cup on the base coat for the Porsche so I had a load of lumps come out on that so I nibbed them out it wasn't too bad this meep is not too bad for lumps some water bases can be really bad for for lumps so that was mistake number two. So I had to give that a, a little bit of a nib. And while I was nibbing it, I turned the camera off and then I didn't turn the camera on for all the base coat application. So <laughs> that was another mistake that I made. And then to top it all off, I was supposed to be using um, Meepa CX2 on this to, do, to sort of give a bit of a review on it. And I mixed up Meepa CX4 without thinking. Um, so yeah there we go we all make mistakes and i made a, i made a few just on one job but it come out all right in the end and uh it looks okay i'm just gonna go back in there in a minute and uh and see what it looks like Right, so the poor spoiler is all, all finished and clear coated. Um, so I'm just going to do a bit of polish on this. So I'll film a bit of polish. Seeing as I messed up the footage on the painting side of it, I'll show you a bit of polishing. So I'll give you a quick look at it. It's pretty clean. It's a couple of nibs here and there, and the finish is all right. Um, little nib there. Um, so yeah, I'll just. I do give this a little flat and polish so I normally try and take the heads off with a tungsten block on on the nibs and then um, then I just flat it by hand with a bit of 2000 production paper and I go over it at 3000 and then I do a two stage machine polish uh, it's normally heavy cut on the rotary and then a medium cut on the dual action so um, yeah I'll put the head cam on and, and start nibbing and polishing this. Right, so that's all the nibs done so i've just nibbed them with 2000 grit production paper and i sort of i rub the nib the nib down itself and then i sort of just try and nib lightly around it so you don't just get like one little flat patch it, uh, where you've got a little bit of orange peel over the rest of it it's got a little bit of peel in this but it's sort of factory they're, they're not sort of glass on these porsches anyway um and you've got a little bit of dye back from the from the wet on wet but the buffer would sort of bring that up and it looked fine so I do heavy cut with a rotary so I use Koshkemi compounds 
and their heads, well, a combination of their heads and the Roops heads as well. So it'd be a Roops rotary, big foot, with heavy cut, and it'd be a couple of couple of goes with that. So I <coughs> put a couple of dots on each patch that have been flatted, uh, polish that, compound that, and then go over it again, do the same again, check it, and then then I'll go over a dual action, which would be a medium cut. Then YouTube's that's the poor spoiler all finished and um, come out okay. I had a couple of issues when I was spraying it, but it come out okay. It's all polished up all right, so I'll give you a quick look. And hopefully the blistering don't come back. We'll see. But it's not gonna get PPF this time. So um, yeah, maybe the PPF didn't help with it, even though you know it is supposed to be a common issue with these. I couldn't do any more apart from bare plastic it, adhesion promote it, pore fill it and prime it. Um, I couldn't think of anything else I could do really unless you start putting some resin over it or something, I'm not sure. But hopefully that should hold it back. So yeah, that's it. Come out all right. Sorry about the crappy video, but it is what it is. And um, yeah, we'll see you again in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>